students, welcome back. This is Mrs. Mercado speaking. Um, this is um, chapter 25 lecture, um, week number 15, running from April the 27th through May the 3rd. Um, during this particular week, we are going to be covering um, our final chapter for this course, which deals with capital investment analysis. Okay. Now, this particular week, you are going to be seeing, uh, let me see, two, four, six, seven homework problems on your chapter 25 homework assignment. I will be going over four of those problems. All of the problems um, in your homework do have a Cengage video tutorial attached to them. That way you can look at the video and kind of um, understand what they're doing. Um, I highly encourage, recommend, advise that all students read the chapter before you attempt your homework problems. That way you are more familiar with the content and you're able to identify, okay, what do I have to do? What section of the book do I have to refer to? So on and so forth, okay? So, having said that, this is the last week that we're gonna be covering content. Next week, week 16, we're gonna be working on a comprehensive project, and then after that, we are in finals week, okay? So this is the last week that I will be covering a chapter, okay? So, let's get started, okay? Um, the first uh, problem I'm going to be going over is exercise 25-1. This um, exercise uh, deals with the average rate of return. Okay? So it says, the following data are accumulated by Loan Peak Incorporated in evaluating two competing capital investment proposals. Okay? So we have two proposals, whether we buy a 3D printer or we buy a truck. Okay? So they give you the amount of the investment for each. So for the 3D printer, it's $40,000. For the truck, it's $50,000. The useful life, seven years versus 10 years. The estimated residual value, that's the amount that this piece of equipment is gonna be valued at after um, the useful life. So you can expect to sell this uh, 3D printer for $3,000 or the truck for $6,000. That's the residual value. And then we have estimated total income over the useful life of $24,080 for the printer and $36,400 for the truck. Using this information provided, we are to determine the expected average rate of return for each proposal. Now, your textbook does a wonderful job in explaining the average rate of return, um, and specifically Section 25-2A. Um, you can refer to that. It provides you several examples of how to calculate the average rate of return. So the average rate of return is what we call the accounting rate of return, and it basically measures the average income as a percentage of average investment, okay? So the formula that is used for the average rate of return is your average annual income over your average investment, okay? So um, that particular forma, formula I'm sorry, um, has some components in there. Usually we do have to calculate um, the average annual income and we also have to calculate the average investment to be able to put those together into our average rate of return calculation, okay? Your average investment is your initial cost plus your residual value divided by two, okay? So these are the formulas that we're gonna be working with or applying towards this problem, okay? So I've set up the problem um, in three steps, okay? So the first, step is we are going to calculate, we're going to calculate the average annual income. That's the first component right here. So for the average rate of return, we have to figure out our average annual income, and we also have to figure out our average investment. So I've broken it out into three. The first thing we do, we're going to calculate the average annual income. In step number two is we're going to calculate the average investment. And then finally, in step number three, we're going to put it together, and we're going to calculate the average rate of return. Okay, so I'm going to have my column here for the 3D printer and my column here for the truck. Okay, so let's start with the average annual income. Okay, so your average annual income uh, right here is being provided. Your um, income is $24,080 for the printer, $36,400 for the truck. Now, let's do the printer first, okay? My income is $24,080, okay? And I'm gonna divide by the useful life. This particular printer is expected to last me seven years, okay? So, if we do the math, that'll be 2480 divided by seven. 
that's going to give me $3,440, okay? That's going to be my average annual income for the printer, okay? Now, we're going to do the same thing for the truck. Now, for the truck, my income is $36,400. And I'm going to divide it over the useful life. The truck is expected to last me 10 years. Okay. So, let's run our calculations for the truck. That will be $36,400 divided by 10. And that's going to give me $3640. Okay. So now I've calculated my average annual income from the printer and the truck. Step one. Now step two, I'm gonna calculate my average investment, okay? Your average investment is your initial cost plus your residual income divided by two. Okay? That is the calculation that we're gonna be implying on step number two. So once again, I'm gonna do the printer first, okay? So the amount of my investment for the printer is $40,000. Okay. I'm going to add my residual value, which is going to be $3,000. And I'm going to divide by 2. Okay. Now let's do that calculation here. Um, that's, well, that's uh, 40 plus 3, that's $43,000. Divided by 2, that's going to give me $21,500. So my average investment for my printer is $21,500. We're going to do the same thing for the truck. My investment for the truck is $50,000. Okay. I'm going to add my residual value of $6,000 for the truck. And I'm going to divide by 2. Okay. So 50 plus 6, that's 56000 thousand dollars and I'm going to divide by two that's going to give me twenty eight thousand so these amounts represent my average investment these amounts represent my um, average annual income okay now that I have that I can calculate my average rate of return your average rate of your return is your average annual income divided by your average investment so let's do the printer first okay my average income for the printer is 3,440, which is what we're getting from here. And I'm going to divide by my average investment of 21,500. So these are the numbers that I'm picking up for down here, okay? So I'm gonna get 3,440 divided by 21,500 and then I want it in a percentage, that's going to be 16%, okay? So that is the amount, the average rate of return for my 3D printer is 16%, okay? Now I'm going to do my truck. Let me use another color for my truck, okay? So for my truck, these are the numbers I'm going to be picking up, okay? So for my truck, I'm looking at 3640 divided by... 28,000. Okay. Let's see what that gives us. Okay. So that's going to be 3640 divided by 28,000. That's going to give me 13%. So these are my average rate of returns. These are what we are needing to calculate. The 3D printer is going to give me an average rate of return of 16%, while the truck is giving me a 13%. Okay, that is the requirement. Determine the expected average rate of return for each proposal. The 3D printer gives you a higher return than the truck. Okay, So, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of applying the formulas over into our calculation. Um, and he's a cake. Okay. Now we move on to the next problem. This is exercise 25-4 and this deals with cash flows, okay? So it says, Nature Way is planning to invest in new manufacturing equipment to make a new garden tool, okay? The new garden tool is expected to generate additional annual sales of $2,500, I'm sorry, 
Um, the new garden tool is expected to generate additional annual sales of 2,500 units at $60 each. The new manufacturing equipment will cost $227,000 and it's expected to have a useful life of 10 years and a residual value of $17,000. Okay. Selling expenses related to the new product are expected to be 5% of sales revenue. The cost to manufacture the product includes the following per unit basis. Okay. So we are expecting to spend $8 on labor, $22 on materials, $8.40 on fixed factory overhead, specifically the depreciation of the equipment, and $3.60 um, on variable factory overhead. Okay, for a total cost per unit of $42. So we're spending $42, we're selling them at $60 each. Okay. So they're asking you to determine the net cash flows for the year, uh, for the first year of the project, years two through nine, and for the last year of the project. Okay. So I've set up a table here with year one, years two through nine, and the last year. They're wanting us to figure out the cash flows for those three different um, projections for those three different year time frames, okay? So, what we're having to do is we're gonna have to analyze all of the information provided and figure out our cash flows. These are transactions that affect cash, okay? We're only specifically looking at cash flows so we need to identify which transactions impact cash, which transactions do not impact cash, so we can be able to do our calculations. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is with my initial investment. Okay. You are wanting to buy a piece of equipment to be able to manufacture a new garden tool. Okay. So in order for you to be able to manufacture this garden tool, you need to buy this equipment so you can make it, right? The equipment is worth, or the equipment is going to cost you $227,000. So when are you going to pay that $227,000? Are you going to pay year one, years two through nine, or the last year? Okay. Usually these are upfront costs. You know, if I'm buying a piece of equipment, I'm buying that the first year. Okay. So, because you are paying cash for this piece of equipment, that is a decrease, okay? So I'm gonna be, it's an outflow flow of cash, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put it in parentheses. Anytime you spend money, you put it in minus or parentheses. Anytime you receive money, you put it, it's a positive, so it's uh, just a regular number, okay? Uh, so that's 227,000 initial investment, year number one. That is when you buy the equipment, okay? And you're only paying for it once, so that will only happen year one, okay? Now we're gonna look at our operating cash flows. Okay. The first thing we have is annual revenues, okay? How much are we going to make off of this, um, you know, the production of these new garden tools, okay? Yeah, we're buying a piece of equipment at 227,000 to manufacture garden tools, but what am I gonna sell, okay? So according to the problem, you're gonna sell 2,500 units. Okay. Uh, units, and you're gonna be selling them at $60 a piece, okay? So let's get our calculator out. That's 2,500 units at $60 a piece. So that means that I'm gonna be making $150,000 every year if my sales go as planned, okay? So, every year I am going to make $150,000, okay? Now that is gonna be year one, from the year number one to the last year. That's what my sales are anticipated. Every year I'm gonna sell 2,500 units at $60. So that information goes in all three columns because that is my annual revenue. That is what I'm anticipating selling in this new garden tool I'm going to be manufacturing, okay? Now, that is how much I'm going to make in money, but just like you make money, you have to invest, you know, and have some costs associated with it. We're going to have some selling expenses, okay? Now, the problem says that your selling expenses are 5% of your sales revenue, okay? So, 
your sales revenue are $150,000, and I'm going to multiply that by 5%. Okay? So, my selling expenses every year is going to be $150,000 times 5%. That's going to be $7,500. Now, this is going to be selling expenses. You are paying for uh, to be able to sell these goods. Anytime it's an expense, it's a minus. Okay? So that is going to be for all from the beginning to the end. Every year that I have sales, I'm going to have an associated selling expense of $7,500. And this is minus or in parentheses because it's an expense to the company. I'm going to have to pay for some selling expenses. Okay? Now, I also have some cost to manufacture the product. And the cost, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna put cost to manufacture, okay? And I'm gonna have to be manufacturing 2,500 units. Now, they give you the um, cost per unit basis here. Now, I'm only interested in um, identifying the cost that impacts cash. We are dealing with cash flows, okay? So, I'm gonna do a little. Um, calculation here okay so my cost to manufacture okay is going to include my eight dollars for my direct labor okay plus my twenty two dollars for my materials I'm gonna have to pay that in cash I'm gonna pay my employees labor in cash I'm gonna pay my materials in cash how about depreciation? Do you pay depreciation in cash? Okay. Depreciation is not something that um, affects cash. Okay, It's just an internal transaction that is generated to be able to allocate the use of the equipment over a period of time to depreciate it. Okay? Depreciation does not affect cash, so I'm not going to take that into consideration because it does not impact cash. Okay? Now my variable factory overhead, yes, it's gonna get included because that can include maintenance, the utilities, whatever the case might be, okay? So, $8 plus $22 plus $360 is gonna give me my manufacturing cost of $33.60, okay? That is the amount that I'm gonna use to for my cost to manufacture. And remember, we are only interested in our manufacturing costs that impact cash. Depreciation does not impact cash, okay? So, I'm going to have 2,500 units times $33.60 a unit. That's going to be a cost of $84,000 to cover my labor, materials, and overhead, okay? $84,000, and that's negative because I'm having to pay for all of these things, okay? I'm having to pay for materials, labor, and the variable overhead, okay? So that's $84,000, okay? So now I can figure out my net operating cash flows. So your net operating cash flows, let me put these um, in underline, okay? is going to be the sum of all of your transactions above that. So because I do have uh, Excel here, I'm just going to do um, formulas, okay? And I'm just going to run them. Uh, this is my net operating cash flows, and I'm going to copy that down a little bit. That way I can do my net operating cash flows. This is for year one, okay? Oh, sorry. This is my total for year one. This is my total for years two through nine. So my cash flows would be the sum of everything that happened here, which would be 58,500. And then my total for the last year. Before I do my total for the last year, 
Okay, so we've got, how did I get the 168.5? Okay, I got the negative 227 plus the positive 150 minus 7,500 minus 84,000. So year one, I basically, I had a negative outflow of cash of 168.500, okay? Now, um, year number two, I went ahead and I made 150,000 positive for my revenues. I spent 7,500 in selling expenses and 84,000 in my cost to manufacture. So years two through nine every year. So that means that year two, I made 58,500. Year three, I made 58,500. Year four, I made 58,500, so on and so forth, okay? Now, I'm working on my last year, okay? Now, before I work on my last year, there's one more component that we need to do, okay? Now, the problem says here that this piece of equipment that I bought is gonna last me 10 years, okay? Now, on the last year, that particular piece of equipment can be sold or whatever the case might be. So that piece of equipment is valued or is going to have a residual value of $17,000, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my residual value because we are looking at the last year, okay? So on the last year, you're always going to add your residual value. Your residual value in this case is $17,000. Now, after you've added your residual value, I can get my total for the last year, okay? So the total for my last year would be everything that ha has in that last column, okay? So my total uh, cash flows for last the last year, which is year number 10, is gonna be $75,500, okay? So your operating cash flows are 168.5, 58.5 and 75,500, okay? Let me highlight those, okay? So year number one, because that's the year that you made your investment, your negative 168.5, years two through nine, every year you're gonna be making 58.5, and then the last year you're gonna have positive 75,500. So. The question here was determine the net cash flows for the first year of the project, which is 168.5, negative 168.5, I'm sorry. Years two through nine, my cash flows are 58,500 per year. And for the last year of the project is 75,500. Remember for the last year of the project to always add your residual value if any is provided, okay? Now remember also for your cost to manufacture, Always exclude depreciation. Depreciation does not affect cash. So we're only wanting to look at transactions that actually involve or affect cash. So that is exercise 25-4. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's move on. Well, the next one we have is 25-7. Okay. Now this problem deals with the net present value method, okay? So it says, the following data is accumulated by Jeet's company in evaluating the purchase of a 150,000 piece of equipment having a four year useful life, okay? So they give you the year one through four net income and the net cash flows, okay? Assuming that the desired rate of return is 15%, determine the net present value of the proposal. Okay. Use the table present value of a dollar appearing in exhibit two of this chapter. So I went ahead and I copied that exhibit down here so that way we can use it. Okay. Now, present value concept, there's a section on your book that covers it. Please go over and read it. There's basically two present value concepts. We have the present value of an amount, which is what we're going to be using at in this particular problem. And then we have the present value of an annuity. Okay. So the present value of an amount is basically um, the logistics or the thought of, would you prefer to get a, a dollar today versus maybe a dollar, in this particular example, three years from now? So if someone gave you an option, what do you want? Do you want a dollar now or do I wait three years and then give you a dollar later? Okay? You should always prefer to get the dollar now. Why? Because you can invest that dollar. It's like putting money into your savings account. Okay? 
You put money into your savings account or your CD or whatever the case might be, and that money is growing, okay? Why? Because you invested in it, and you're investing, and you're getting some kind of interest rate on it, okay? So you're earning interest on the money, okay? So in this particular case, they give you an example of a dollar, okay? Um, so uh, you're going to have a dollar, you're going to get it today, and you're going to be earning 12% interest. Now, that's pretty high. Most of you, you know, um, if you have money in your bank, it's not paying you very much, you know. 1%, 2%, half a percent, depending on what type of an account you have. But here it's 12%, okay? So basically what happens here, it shows you how that money grows, okay? So if you have a money, a dollar today, okay, after a year, um, earning 12%, you're going to have a dollar and 12 cents, okay? So it's grown by 12 cents, okay? Now, that second year, you have a dollar and 12 cents, and you're getting paid 12% interest. So now you're going to have a dollar and 25 cents, okay? And then that one dollar and 25 cents, you earn more interest, and then it just keeps on growing and growing and growing, okay? So year over year, um, you're going to see the money grow from a dollar to a dollar 12, to a dollar 25, to a dollar 40. This is for a dollar. Now imagine if you have millions of dollars. It does make a difference. It does make an impact of that value of that dollar. Okay? So when you're dealing with, you know, just regular cash flows, um, then we use the uh, present value of an amount. Okay? Now, there's another component that's explained here, and that's the present value of an annuity. Oh, sorry. So the present value of an annuity, or an annuity, is basically a series of equal net cash flows at a fixed time interval. So if you know you're going to be getting $1,000 every month for the rest of your life, okay, that's an annuity. Okay. Um, so it's just a matter of identifying you know, what it is. And annuities are common, usually for cash payments of monthly rent, salaries, bond interest. Um, these are just some common examples of annuities, okay? Um, so the net present value of an annuity is the amount of cash needed today to yield a series of equal net, net cash flows at a fixed time intervals in the future. So how much money do I need today to be able to pay out those annuities, okay? So in this particular example, they give you a the present value of a $100 annuity for five periods at 12%, okay? So the example that they give you is, if I wanna pay out $100, um, you know, for the next five years, um, how much money would I need today, okay? So this is the present value of the annuity year one. I would need $89.30 for year two to be able to, uh, obtain a hundred dollars I would need seventy nine dollars and seventy cents and so on and so forth okay so it's just um, the difference is the tables that are utilized okay um, there are different calculations that are involved um, we are going to go over in this particular class over the present value uh, of an amount um, both in exercise 25 7 and in your problem that you're going to be seeing on your test okay so we are going to be using Exhibit 2, which is the partial present value of a dollar table, okay? So, just make sure you read over the section. It provides you with um, great examples, okay? So, let's go back to the problem. So here they give you the net, net income and the net cash flow, okay? Now, it's important to differentiate between net income and net cash flow because sometimes students get confused, okay? So net income is basically the um, revenue recognized in a reporting period less the expenses recognized in that same period, okay? Now, when we calculate our net income, that is usually calculating, calculated using the accrual basis of accounting under which expenses are recognized at the, time, uh, at the same time as the revenues to which they relate, okay? So not necessarily... Does it mean, for example, if you have um, accrual-based accounting basically means it's whether you paid out cash or did not pay out cash, you still record the transaction in your books. It's an accrual that needs to get done to update your records to, with, with, uh, to be able to recognize the events that actually occur. Okay? 
So, the, the basis of accrual accounting call for, calls for the use of expense accruals to accelerate the recognition of expenses that have not been paid, as well as the use of prepaid expenses to defer the recognition of costs that have not yet been consumed. Also, sales are recognized as they are earned rather than when they are associated amounts of cash payments from the customers are received. So in accrual basis accounting, you go out there, you perform a service, the customer says, I'll pay you next month, okay? You go back and you record that revenue in your books this month, even though you haven't gotten paid, okay? All of these are accrual entries that are being recorded, not necessarily because either you've paid or received cash, but because they have occurred, okay? And you have to record accruals to update your records. Now, on the net cash flow, that is basically the net change in the amount of cash that a business generates or loses during a reporting period. So this is specific to cash, okay? And this is usually measured as of the end of the last day in a reporting period. Net cash flows is calculated by determining the changes in ending cash balances from period to period and is not impacted by the accrual basis of accounting. So there is a difference between net cash flows and net income where one uh, takes into account accrual basis accounting and the other one is only looking or taking into consideration any cash transactions, okay? So, let's look at the problem. So it says, the following data was accumulated for Gates Company in evalu evaluating the purchase of a $150,000 piece of equipment having a four-year life and we are assuming that the desired rate of return is 15% um, in our net present value for the proposal. And they're asking us to use Exhibit 2 table to be able to calculate this amount, okay? So, they're asking us to determine the net present value for the proposal, okay? So, let's look at how we're going to calculate. So, I've set up the problem this way. I'm going to have my years 1 through 4 because this is a 4-year useful life. Okay. Now, the first thing is to figure out my present value of $1 at the 15% rate of return that they're wanting. Okay. So, to do that, I need to look at my present value table. Okay. Now, the uh, rate of return that they're looking at is 15%. So I'm going to be looking at the 15% column, and we're looking at four years, okay? So I'm going to be looking at 15%, and I'm going to be looking at the first four years, okay? So that's what I'm going to be looking at, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these rates, okay? These are my present value rates at the 15% mark using the present value table of a dollar, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use these rates. So for year one, it'll be 0 0.870. For year two, 0 0.756. Year three, uh, 0 0.658. And year four, 0 0.572. Okay, I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna copy it over here. These are my rates. So all I'm doing is copying from the table down here, guys. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Format these, okay? And then it'll be 0 0.756, 0 0.658, and uh, 0 0.572. Okay. So this is my present value table, and we're looking at a desired rate of return of 15% for the first four years because this has a useful life of four years. Now I'm going to get my net cash flow amount, okay? So I'm going to copy this information over to my table, okay? So I'm just going to copy your 1 through 4 net cash flows, okay? So all I did was copy and pasted my cash flows from the information provided in the problem. Now, I need to figure out the present value of my net cash flow, okay? 
So to do that, you multiply your present value rate times your net cash flow to get your present value of the net cash flow. Okay, so you're going to multiply the rate times your net cash flow to give you um, a dollar amount. Okay, now um, it's very important that you read the problem carefully. Okay, um, okay. So they're just asking you to figure that out, okay? So I'm just going to do that for the rest of the uh, years. Multiply the rate times the net cash flow for each. Rate times cash flow. And rate times cash flow. There we go. So I've not, now got my present value of my net cash flows um, for year one through four. Okay, so what does this tell me? That tells me that year number one, my cash flow is going to be $80,000. The present value of that cash flow today, so today that those $80,000 are worth $69,600. So from $69,600 invested at a 15% rate, that's going to grow to $80,000 for year one, okay? This is how much those cash flows that you're going to be receiving in the future are worth today. Now we're going to get the total. Okay. Equal sum. I'm going to get the total of my four cash flows right there. That's going to give me 174520 Okay. That is how much you're going to be receiving. That's the present value of the net cash flows that you're going to be receiving for this particular uh, proposal. Okay. Now, I need to deduct... The amount that I'm going to invest. Not all of this is yours, okay? You had to put some money into it. How much money did you put into this investment? Well, I put in $150,000. I'm going to take that out, okay? So $150,000 is deducted. Now I can figure out my net present value, and your net present value is your total, which is the 174520 okay? Minus the 150,000. Okay, and that's going to give me a net present value of 24,520. Okay. So that is the net present value of your investment into this piece of equipment. Okay, a positive 24,520. Now, letter B says, would management, management be likely to look with favor on the proposal? Okay. Well, it is a positive number. We are recup recuperating our $150,000 investment, and we're still having $24,520 left over in cash flows. So, I would say, would management be likely to favor this proposal? Yes. Management would be likely to favor this proposal. Okay. <coughs> the 24520 uh, net present value indicates that the return on the proposal is greater than the minimum desired rate of return of 15%. So we got more than what we were expecting. Okay. okay. So yes, I would favor the proposal. I would encourage management to invest into this buying this 150,000 piece of equipment. Okay. So this is exercise 25-7. And it's just a matter of getting your present value rates times your net cash flows to get your present value of your net cash flow, deduct your uh, the amount of your investment, and then you can figure out your net present value. Okie dokie. Now we're going to do problem 25-1A. You are going to see something similar to this on your test. Okay. So this is the problem that you're going to be seeing from chapter 25 up on your fi uh, final exam. It's something similar to this. Okay. So this problem deals with the average rate of return, the net present value method, and the analysis of the service company. So it says, the Capital Investment Committee of Arches Landscaping Company is considering two capital investments. 
The estimated income from operations and the net cash flows from each investment are as follows. So they give you the, um, the information for the first investment, which is a front-end loader, and then the second investment, which is a greenhouse. So we have those two options, okay? So um, each project requires an investment of $75,000. So whether we pick option A or option B, I'm going to be spending or looking at investing seventy-five dollars Straight line depreciation will be used and no residual value is expected. Okay, so that's very important. No residual value. Okay, so at the end of um, its useful life, these uh, the front end loader or the greenhouse are not going to have any value associated with it. The committee has selected a rate of return of 12% for purposes of the net present value analysis. Okay, so instructions. Requirement A, compute the average rate of return for each investment, okay? So this is my requirement A. Now, in the prior problem, we had already uh, calculated our average rate of return, which is our average annual income over our average investment. Um, and we had done the calculations for our average investment, which is our initial cost plus our residual value, okay? So the first component that I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my average annual income, okay? So, your annual income. Well, let's look at uh, our income for the loader is $56,250. My income from the greenhouse is $56,250. So, I only have to do one calculation because my income is the same for both. And now, both of these projects are going to be good for five years. Okay, so it's the same amount of time uh, that they're going to be um, valid for, and the income for both projects are the same. So it's going to yield the same amount, so it doesn't really matter what number I pick, they're the same, 56,250, 56,250. So the, um, my, my income is going to be 56,250, and this is going to be for five years. Okay, this projects, both of these projects are for five years, okay? So, my top component, which is my average annual income, is my income of 56,250 divided by five years, okay? So, 56,250 divided by five, that's going to give me 11,250, okay? That's my average annual income. Now, the bottom is your average investment. And that is your initial cost plus your residual value. Now, here it says that this particular um, items, your front end loader or your greenhouse, are not going to have any salvage value. Okay? So it's your initial cost plus your residual value, which is zero, divided by two. Okay? So how much is... Um, uh, how much am I going to have to invest in these projects? So, the investment for both projects, whether it be the loader or the greenhouse, is $75,000. Okay? So then that $75,000. And then my residual income is zero. Okay? So that's going to give me just $75,000. And I'm going to divide by two. Initial cost plus residual value divided by 2, okay? So then that's going to be 75,000 divided by 2. That's going to be 37,500. So now the top part is your average annual income. Okay, average annual income, okay? And then the bottom one is your average investment. Okay, that's what it is. Now, once you have those two together, I can get my average annual income divided by my average investment, and that's going to give me my amount. So, my average annual income is eleven thousand two fifty. I'm going to divide by my average investment of thirty-seven thousand five hundred, and that's going to give me my average rate of return of 30%. Okay, that is the answer that I'm looking for.
Okay, 30% right there. That is requirement A. Okay, it's just basically the application of the formula into the data. And I did not have to do different calculations because my income from both projects is the same, 56250 The investment for both projects is 75000 And both projects are going to have a useful life of five years. If the information would have varied or would have been different, then maybe you would have had to do separate calculations. But this, this is Apple. Um, the data provided is the same for both Project A or Project B. Okay. Now, let's look at requirement B. The net present value for each investment. Use the present value of a dollar table appearing on Exhibit 2. Um, round present values to the nearest dollar. So here they're asking us to compute our net present value for each investment. And we're going to use these tables. But now, remember, our, our, our rate is 12%. Okay? And we're looking at five years. So let's look at our table. We're doing 12% and we're doing five years. Okay, so those are the figures that I'm going to be looking at, or the rates that I'm going to be looking at, 12%. Okay? So, I'm going to, step number one, bring in those rates from down here. Okay? 0 0.893, year one, 0 0.797, year two, 0 0.712, year three, 0 0.636, year four, and 0 0.567, year five. I'm going to copy that up here. Okay. So all I did was copy from my table, from my present value table, the rates over here. Okay. Now I have to enter my cash flows. And I have different cash flows for my loader and my greenhouse. And these are your cash flows. Cash flows for your loader. And then these are your cash flows for your greenhouse. Okay. So we're going to be looking at those two numbers. And I'm just going to copy those numbers and paste them over here. So for my front end loader, I'm looking at cash flows of 40000 40, 1, 2, 3, uh, 35,000, 22,000, 18,000, and 16,250, and then a total of 131,250. Okay. For my greenhouse, I'm looking at 26,250 every year. So every year in the greenhouse, you're going to have constant uh, cash flows, the same every year. Okay. While the other ones, they, for the front end loader, they vary by year, okay? okay? So, I've got my cash flows from the data provided, okay? Now, I can calculate my present value of net cash flows. And how do we do that? You just multiply the rate times the net cash flow, and we're doing the front end loader first. So I'm multiplying it times my forty percent my forty thousand dollars. Okay? And that gives me thirty-five seven twenty. We're gonna do the same thing. Zero point seven nine seven times thirty-five thousand. Or we're doing zero point seven one two times twenty two thousand. Okay. So what you're doing is you're getting the rate times the cash flow year over year for the loader. So let's keep on running those calculations. The rate times your cash flow for the loader. And then the last one, we've got the rate times the cash flow. Okay. And then we can get our total. Okay. The total for the five years. Okay. We're going to do the same thing for the greenhouse. For the greenhouse, you're going to use the same rate. But now you're going to multiply against the net cash flow for the greenhouse, which is 26250 every year. So you're going to get your rate times 
times your cash flow from the greenhouse. The rate times the cash flow for the greenhouse. Okay. Rate times the cash flow for the greenhouse for all of the five years. And then I'm going to get my total. So this is how much the, ca the net cash flow that you're going to be receiving from project one or project two is. 99941 versus 94631 Now that is the cash, the net present value of our net cash flow from the projects. But we needed to invest into each of the projects. How much did we invest into each of the projects? Well, we invested $75,000, okay? So the amount to be invested, I'm going to put it in negative, minus sign, because this is what I had to pay for the loader or for my greenhouse, okay? Now I can calculate my net present value, okay? And that is going to be your uh, total um, and minus your amount invested. That gives me my net present value for my front end loader is twenty four thousand nine forty one. The net present value of my greenhouse is nineteen thousand six thirty one. Okay, that is what requirement B was asking. Calculate the net present value for each investment. Okay, these are my net present values for each of my investments. Okay, now requirement two. Prepare a brief report for the Capital Investment Committee advising it on the relative merits of the two investments. So now you're having to say, okay, I've run the numbers. This is what we think you should do, committee. Okay, this is our recommendation. Okay. So, what does it say here? Uh, prepare a brief report for our Capital Investment Committee. So who is this going to be addressed to? to capital Investment Committee. Did I spell committee correct? Double M I double T. Okay. Double T double E. Too many doubles of everything. Okay. So um I don't want it to merge. Well I guess they've merged it here. Okay, so, let me see, let me see if I can unformat this, unmerge, okay. Um, like this, that right? okay, so, my requirement A would basically be, okay, if we look at the, the, the projects, at both projects, the front end loader and the greenhouse, okay, I'm going to say both projects offer the same average annual rate of return of 12%. That's what, that's what they were recommending, okay? Well, no, they offer, uh, both projects offer the same average annual rate of return that we calculated of 30%. Assuming a rate of 12%, okay? Okay. So, margin center. So, for letter A, both projects give me 30% annual rate of return. Why? Because both projects have the same amount of income being generated. Um, and both of them had the same investment amount. And that yielded a 30% um, average rate of return for both. Now, if we look at the net present value analysis, okay, let me do B over here. And sorry about the merging, but I just have so many cells, I'm just going to have a blank space in between. But the data is here, okay? So the first thing we say is whether you choose project A or project B, 
the front loader or the greenhouse, they both give you a 30% average rate of return, which is pretty good. Okay. Now, if we look at the net present value analysis, okay, we can say that also, okay, both projects exceed the selected rate established at 12%. The front end loader offers a larger net present value. The front end loader has a larger net present value because It has larger cash flows occurring earlier in time compared to the greenhouse. Thus, if only one project would be accepted, The front end loader would be the more attractive option. So, when we're looking at the net present value analysis, we're comparing the front end loader with the greenhouse. Now, if we look at the cash flows from the loader, we're getting 40,000 year one versus 26,000 to 250. So what happens with those 40,000? I can get those 40,000 and I can invest it, okay, at the net present value of 0 0.893 and get my money. I'm gonna get more money for my front end loader than for my greenhouse, okay? So that is generating or uh, is producing a higher return um, than my greenhouse because my greenhouse has steady net cash flows um, it doesn't yield me as the higher um, net present value of my cash flows okay both of these are good options but if I had to choose I would choose the front end loader as the project I would proceed with investing in for purposes of this project okay running both both analysis and comparing that regardless of the option I choose my average rate of return is 30 percent for both but looking at the net present value of my cash flows, I'm going to get a higher present value for my front end loader than my greenhouse because I am getting my net cash flows, higher net cash flows um, for my front end loader in the beginning of the, of the first two years versus steady um, cash flows for my greenhouse. Okay? So if you had to make a recommendation to management, the recommendation would be to invest in the front end loader. You're gonna have something similar to this on your test, okay, students? Please make sure that you review um, how all of these numbers came about. Um, I went over all of the data. It's just a matter of selecting the correct rates from the table, okay? Um, and then, um, where would my table go? Over here, okay? It's just a matter of selecting the, re the correct rates from your table and then um, using those rates um, and then just multiplying it by your net cash flows for each of the projects, okay, to give you your present value for each of the projects, okay? Make sure that you deduct your amount invested to give you your net present value for both of the projects or both of the investments here. So, you are gonna have something like this on your final exam, okay? And I did go over it so you can have in-depth notes of how I came up with each of those numbers, okay? So like I stated before, this is the last chapter that we're gonna be covering. Um, so this will be your last homework assignment. Next week, you are gonna be working on a comprehensive project. Um, so um, you're gonna have the entire week to work on that. And then once again, the last week is finals week. Okay? If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me.
I am here to help you in what I can, but please do read the chapter before you attempt it. That way you can have an understanding of what's going on, okay? So that is it for this um, week. I hope all of you stay safe. Um, please give it to you all. Try to earn as much points possible. We are nearing the end of the semester. Uh, please look over your grade book. That's another reminder I wanted to make. Uh, please look over your grade book. If you identify that you're missing any of grades, that you found some mistakes, some errors, uh, get with me as soon as possible so we can get those corrected before I have to submit final grades, okay? So take about five minutes of your time. Look over your grade book. Um, you know what you've completed, what you have not completed. Um, and if you identify anything that doesn't look right, um, bring it up to me and then I can take a look at it, okay? Um, so that's it. Take care and until next time.